What happened to Chad and Jeremy? Chad Stewart and Jeremy Clyde met while attending London Central School of Speech and Drama. The two became fast friends, and after Stewart taught Clyde to play guitar, they formed a folk duo as well as a rock and roll group called The Jerks. Because he was a year ahead of his bandmates, he relocated to Scotland and performed with the Dundee Repertory Theatre. When The Jerks dissolved, Stewart dropped out of school, studied arranging, and wrote songs with composer Russell Franks. Clyde returned to London soon after, but in the face of an actor strike, he resumed his music career, reunited with Stewart, and the duo landed a residency at the local coffee house, Tina's. Chad and Jeremy quickly earned a fan following, and in mid-1963, Composer and producer John Barry signed the duo to the small independent label Ember Records. They released their debut single, Yesterday's Gone, that autumn, and it entered the UK Top 40. Remarkably, it would prove their only British hit of any real substance. By the time their sophomore effort, Like I Love You Today, was released in early 1964, Chad and Jeremy were headlining the West End Landmarks Hatchets. Despite the increased exposure, the record flopped and Barry bought out his Ember contract, relegating the duo's planned LP to producer Shell Tommy in the process. Soon after the release of Chad and Jeremy Sing For You, the Daily Express published a photo of a young Clyde who is a graduate of the prestigious private school Eton and a descendant of the famed Duke of Wellington in royal garb on the 1952 coronation of Queen Elizabeth. Given the credibility afforded the working class backgrounds of rockers like John Lennon and Paul McCartney, the publicity proved a near fatal blow, effectively branding Chad and Jeremy upper crust Nancy boys merely pretending at music careers. However, as the album tanked at home, Chad and Jeremy's US label World Artist scored a top 20 American hit with Yesterday's Gone, which was followed by a summer song in August 1964, which was a gorgeously nuanced and pastoral folk pop masterpiece that cracked the Billboard Top 5. When Willow Weep For Me also charted in the U.S., Chad and Jeremy relocated to California and signed with the infamous manager Alan Klein, who negotiated a buyout of their world artist contract and landed the duo a new deal with Columbia. In late 1964, Chad and Jeremy made their American television debut on The Hollywood Palace. William Morris's agent, John Hartman, was so impressed with their performance that he offered his representation, which resulted in appearances on the sitcoms The Dick Van Dyke Show and The Patty Duke Show. Chad and Jeremy were television fixtures for years to come, additionally appearing on The Danny Kay Show, Shindig, and many more. In January 1965, Chad and Jeremy were in talks with a major label, Columbia. Between tour stops and studio dates, the pace was relentless and in the spring of 1965, Stewart was leveled by mononucleosis. What Do You Want With Me and From A Window were included on the duo's second world artist album, Chad and Jeremy Sing For You from 1965. Columbia quickly released a new album, Before and After, in June. The titled track single Before and After peaked at number 17 almost immediately on the Billboard Hot 100. When Clyde accepted a role in the London musical Passion Flower Hotel, which would be a nine-month commitment, he and Stewart quickly recorded an LP, I Don't Want to Lose You, Baby, while the latter continued his rehabilitation. The title track was composed by Van McCoy, which he later wanted to do the number one hit, The Hustle, and preceded the album as a summer single, which peaked at number 35 in August on the Billboard Hot 100.
The duo maintained they were not breaking up, but rumors reached a fever pitch when Clyde failed to return to the U.S. for a scheduled Chicago performance, and he forced Stewart to take the stage alone with a cardboard cutout of his partner under his arm. Stewart next released a record called The Cruel War with his wife Jill, while Clyde cut a John Barry-produced solo single, I Love My Love. Neither earned much attention, and at year's end, they reunited to make a new album called Distant Shores and filmed a proposed pilot for NBC. The show was rejected in favor of another project with a rock and roll theme, The Monkees, and Chad and Jeremy instead guested on two episodes of the blockbuster Batman. The duo spent close to a year in the studio with producer Gary Usher to create 1967's Of Cabbages and Kings, a dense, ambitious record dubbed a soundtrack without the film by Clyde. The album served to alienate much of the duo's core fan base, however, and sales proved dismal. Usher nevertheless produced the follow-up single Painted Dayglow Smile, followed in early 1968 by Sister Marie. Tensions between Chad and Jeremy continued, prompted in large part by the latter's burgeoning acting career, and after completing the arc, a film so expensive that it led Columbia to terminate Usher's contract, the duo split, although the soundtrack to the film Three in the Attic, essentially a Stewart solo effort, appeared in 1969 under the Chad and Jeremy name. Clyde turned to acting full-time and appeared alongside ex-Manfred Mann vocalist Paul Jones in the long-running stage production Conduct Unbecoming. Stewart, meanwhile, signed on as music director for the Smothers Brothers Comedy Hour, followed by a stint as a staff producer with A&M Records. The duo reunited in 1977 to record a handful of unreleased demos, and five years later, they signed to RCA's Rockshire, a subsidiary to release a comeback LP called Chad Stewart and Jeremy Clyde. The record went nowhere, but their partnership continued, first in a London production of Pump Boys and Dinettes, and then as part of the 1986 British Invasion 2 package tour. In 2002, Stewart in his private studio was getting ready to release a recording from Hera's engagement when Clyde visited. The two recorded a new version of Yesterday's Gone as a bonus track for the album In Concert, the official bootleg. In 2003, PBS brought the duo together for the 60s pop rock reunion special, leading to a concert tour the next year. They reimagined several of their 60s songs, resulting in the album Archaeology, released in 2008 on the 40th anniversary of the arc. Chad and Jeremy performed at the Sundance Film Festival in January 2009 and in September 2010 marked their first meeting anniversary with a limited edition CD titled 50 Years On. After 15 years of semi-regular touring, Stewart retired to his home in Sun Valley, Idaho in 2018. Clyde now tours as a solo artist, blending Chad and Jeremy songs with newer music from his multi-album series, The Bottom Drawer Sessions. He also engages in nostalgic concerts with his longtime friend Peter Asher of Peter and Gordon. Unfortunately, Stewart passed away on December 20th, 2020 due to pneumonia following a fall. And that's what happened to Chad and Jeremy. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. Give me some facts about them that I failed to mention and let me know who I should do next on this channel. Thanks again and I'll see you in the next video.